Hello, everyone. Welcome inside the Red Earth Production Studios, another YBM cast. We have a prep report with PBR Missouri's Kevin Mulder and Coach Tony Perkins. We're continuing our discussion today uh, about the future games that happened a couple weeks ago. We talked about pitchers the last time on, and uh, we appreciate you guys joining with us. Always remember, why being cast powered by Game 7 Baseball. If you haven't stepped into a fall ball tournament, and I think we got some fall ball tournaments starting this weekend. Uh, I believe I talked to Dave Pitting over at uh, the Home Run Derby. We were out this last weekend at the Home Run Derby with uh, Billy Mayhall. It was a great event for the community. Um, he's got, I believe, six events coming up August, September, October. Game7Baseball.com. Get your team registered. Get your fall on. That's a good term. I like that. Get your fall on. See what you got, right? See what you got happening. You, get, you just reset your uh, your your team probably. <laughs> There's a lot of turnover in youth baseball. <laughs> so, um, Kevin, how you doing, man? We are great. How about yourself? Good, good, Coach. Doing awesome. Yeah, guys, just were at the your uh, <coughs> your golf tournament over uh, this last weekend, right? Yeah, went blessed. very well. Everybody had, had a good time. Yeah, Coach Mulder, well, great well. time. Yeah, Coach Mulder didn't lose no balls. He did. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Kevin, that would be a lie. <laughs> <laughs> were you on the winning team? No, but I wasn't. We we finished somewhere in the middle. So, I'm. Uh, I'm uh, the type of golf I play is if I hit a bad shot, I don't get too mad about it. So when I hit a good one, I can enjoy it, but I'm not too serious about it. So, but it had had a great time out his tournament, that's for sure. It was fun. Uh, people, you know, they ask you what your uh, we ask you know your question. What's your what's your handicap? And I always say I'm a hacker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> that ends the conversation. I don't need to know. You know, handicap. Let's go out and hit the uh, hit hit around, you know. <laughs> That's good. Glad to hear it. Uh, let's talk a little uh, baseball. You guys, we talked about the pitchers. We got, uh, you know, we had all the position players. Everybody went through the um, all the measurable stuff. Talk to us. Talk to us about uh, those measurables. What those <laughs> kids were able to accomplish. Where'd they stack up as you see them in that national? stage there were a lot of dudes there we, go ahead Kev. yeah it, it's um <laughs> you know for the positional guys you know we talked pitchers last time and it they have a little bit of an advantage i say i would say in the future games because the uh you know they're in there they're going to showcase usually they're throwing about two innings and uh you know so as a hitter though you're facing a new pitcher every single at bat. Every pitcher down there is basically a dude, um, and you're going to get their best shot for for the at bat you got. So um, it, it can be a tough experience for the positional players. But we we had some guys show extremely well. Uh, we had a physical, um, pretty physical group. I thought this year uh, we do a workout day the day before the game start with the positional players. So you get to see them, you know, get to kick the tires on them a little bit. You, you run them through a 60 yard dash and, and, and see their foot speed there. And then they work out from their defensive position, whether that's outfield, infield, catching, uh, first base. Uh, and, and then they take a full round of BP uh, on the track man unit and kind of get some measurables there. So you really get to pick over the guys and then, and then you get to see them for three straight days playing games and uh, taking in and out beforehand. So you, you learn a lot about the guys for sure. Yeah. It was interesting too, that I, I noticed some of the college guys floating around the batting cages before the games, even just to see what their BP rounds were. I mean, they, they, if they were interested, they showed up early and, and cruised by the batting cages. Each field had a batting cage and each side. So it's nice that they could, Get a look at those guys. Gentlemen, how much, you know, you've been around this game a long time. And now that we're into these types of situations, I know technology has changed the way we look at some of these events, correct? Yeah. How much does it 
how much does that technology factor into these measurables when these coaches are coming around? I don't know. They they do. I mean, I Kevin's really good at it. I mean, that's where a lot of the people go to his website to check out, you know, the bios and check out the video of him stuff. And that's what kids are paying for is get those kinds of information up on that website. So I think Coach Motor could expand on that a little bit more. So, yeah, I, I think the technology is great, but there's a time and a place for everything. And so, you know, we're just starting to get into the point of these kids' careers where, all right, some of these numbers start to mean something. Um, you know, but when you're 8, 10, 12 years old, you know, I don't know how much this stuff actually does for you. I think you'd be, you know, you're, you're better off, you know, way better off at, at a Coach Perkins camp or something like that, learning how to play the game, learning how to get your mechanics right. Now, once you start to get to a certain level of player, then it, it gets really hard to separate. Oh, yeah, well, I can talk to Coach Perkins and he can tell me, yeah, this guy hits a ton. Uh, or I can say, yeah, he's got big time power. Now we get these kids on the track, man, and it can give us some real data. All right, now we know his exit velo, uh, the angle, uh, his attack angle, uh, which, you know, the launch angle and hand speed and bat speed, and we can get some real measurements uh, that kind of can show us, oh, you know, this is kind of where a Division One player fits in. This is where a pro player fits in. This is what a, a lower level college player fits in. Uh, so some of these metrics can give us a baseline idea, but you do have to be careful because there are guys that are all stars on these machines that actually can't play. And then there's guys that are just kind of maybe not terrible because no one, no one in college baseball is going to be terrible at this stuff. They're going to have solid numbers, uh, but someone that might be just kind of middle of the pack it, from a statistic, like an analytical standpoint on the on the track man or the blast motion, might be just have a great feel for the game and uh, be a really high end player that way. So you, you take it with a grain of salt, but it can be a very good measuring tool to help sort the players out, especially on the higher levels. I think during the COVID that it was very valuable because that's how college people were recruiting, was just looking at videos and. And I heard a couple guys say, you know, I, I offered a guy without actually seeing him in person, you know, and that was different. That last couple of years, that's happened, right? Yeah, and that would have never happened before, I would say. Correct. Um, or really? at least typically not. That would have never happened. They're not going to do they that. They got to see him. That comes out of all the college yeah. courses. Yeah, we, yeah you, we know he's good and we've heard he's good, but we got to see him. Wow. So that has so these uh, this particular uh, you know the PBRs is is changing because of what we're dealing with in in the climate we have today. I would venture to say you guys got more popular. Am I right? Yeah, our our um, the company has definitely grown, and uh, you know the. With the the situation we've been in the last year and a half or or so, uh, you know, it, it has put an emphasis on what we're doing, and we've kind of taken it and run and and built the brand and added to it. We've we're continuing to add. Uh, you know, last year was the track man and blast motion stuff, and now uh, this coming year we're going to add in pitch AI, which is uh, something that breaks down pitching mechanics and. Uh, deliver delivery how efficient uh, the delivery is and whatnot so we're, we're we're only expanding so this has been an opportunity for the company to to grow and it's uh you know it, it started out in necessity uh i would say because the college coaches weren't able to go out so we had to give them more information and then it's just been a positive response and uh from the coaches and from the players and and so we're building on it you know, I want to go back to something you said a minute ago, Kevin, about these, you know, the younger players. And I think there is that distinction. I really believe that. And with Youth Baseball Midwest, we talk about that 8 to 14U player a lot. We talk about these players a lot. 
Um, on your end, you're talking more to that high school and moving on. You you deal with the 14U, uh, those kids that are coming into that freshman year. You're seeing them whatnot. And that's when you're really kind of starting to see them, correct? Yeah, for the most part, that's where I start my – line of identification uh there might be a kid or two that's a little younger that i'm aware of but yeah right as they're coming into high school i I start to take notice i certainly don't know who they all are at that point um it takes a couple years to you know to get the the whole class started to figure out and you know the the other thing i like to say and it's it i believe it's 100 percent true um, you know, because I get asked about rankings and whatnot. When I put those things out, a, I, I understand that that's an opinion-based thing. Um, but especially with the younger guy rankings, that stuff is good the day it's put out. A month later, it's outdated um, because those kids change so fast. Um, you know, you, you get the, the certain kids that are all-stars at in eighth grade and sixth grade and whatnot just because you know the kid has a beard or he's hit puberty before the other guys and then you know some guys keep growing into their senior year um even some guys even go into college but uh a lot of it's physically driven and so guys change over the course of the winter or over the course of a summer physically a kid grows a couple inches or gets stronger and um you'll see t- guys jump you know, make major jumps in a very, you know, in a couple month period. So, um, it, you know, it, you, you got to be watching the kids at all times because they change quick. Coach, I'm sure you're, you've experienced this, you know, as the kids coming in high school, you hear about that kid at nine, you 10, you that everybody's like, Oh man, this kid's great. And then by the time he gets to high school, you're like, where's this kid? I've witnessed it personally more than once. I mean, where the kid was a stud at seventh, eighth grade and best player in St. Louis. And by the time he's in high school, he's not even hardly playing. If he is playing, he's in a very minor role. And that's happened at least three times. I could rip off some names. I'm not going to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we won't do that. Because, and, and let me ask you this, is that, is that due to some maybe some burnout? Is that do you know? That, are we are we driving be, something a little bit too much? Maybe that, that could be some of it. You know, I, I just think like what Coach was, Muller was saying there that they do mature at different rates. You know, you look at Mark Burley who got cut off his freshman and sophomore year at France Hall North, but then he grew and you know and made a team as a junior or senior, and then grew grew like six inches like in two years. It was crazy how big he got, and then got went to the futures game and could be a Hall of Fame career. Makes a big difference, doesn't it? That's, that's when he he talked about, you know, kids growing in college. Mark Burley is a great example of that. There you go. And, and there's a guy that, uh, you know, we, we see all these guys committing early to big-time schools. That guy went the junior college route. He went to Jeffco um, and was a draft and foul and then signed right before the draft. Um, you know, so that – Everyone's path is different, and uh, I think that's an important thing to re- for all these guys to remember, these high school guys specifically, to remember, like, yeah, you, you are going to see some kids commit as freshmen in high school that are really good players. And, uh, you know, the kid that's uh, maybe Coach Perkins, an average player on his freshman team, might end up being the best player, uh, you know, eight years from now, and the guy that plays professional baseball. So you just never know and guys got to keep working hard and uh, whether the best player or the middle of the road guy or the bottom of the barrel guy time things change Um, you know it's everyone kind of I always like to say everyone needs to run their own race you guys oh go ahead coach go ahead that's what I was always tell my kids don't don't give up I mean when I tell when we have to cut kids because we're at our school we're big enough where we have to you know cut kids and that's part of the conversation is you know, don't give up. You know, there, there's there's different places that you can play that are not high school and maybe keep going at it. I've had numerous guys who got cut as freshmen and make the you know team as a sophomore or get cut as a sophomore, make the team as a junior. You know, that that happens, but it's that what do they got inside? I mean, what do they got for work ethic? You know, are they they going to continue to get bigger, faster? Are they going to grow? You know, physically, like we've been talking about. 
those those kinds of factors you don't know until you know it happens and you know, are you there you know right there at that time ready to roll and that's you know, just don't give up on the game and keep playing it. Let's take a look at a few players. I want to start with a couple of catchers. You had uh, Cole Chance, and I think it was what, Cannon Stuckey was the other mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. young man. And I'm seeing Cole Chance's pop time here at, he had, was ranging 189 to 195. He's in a tough spot because he's a catcher, too. He, he, I mean, he pitches, too. He was 90 off the mound. That's right, huh? Yeah, and... and uh, one of my sons is similar to him, and, and, and it's a tough deal. You're going to be the, the, all the catcher all the time, but you, you're, you've got one of the strongest arms. Most catchers have got the strongest arms anyway, you know, but you put them up on the mound, a lot of times they don't know where it's going. They might be 90-plus, but you don't know where it's going. So it, it's, 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 it's a tough, tough combination. I, I wish him the best. So he worked, he's a pretty talented guy. Yeah, actually, both our catchers were pitchers, and both did really well on the mound. Cannon uh, also has a really good arm and a, a plus slider, um, and uh, he's more like 88 or so. And then, uh, as Coach said, Cole was uh, to, up to 90, and he's a big physical kid. And both of those guys have big-time arms, um, obviously, that are doing it on the mound as well, and they can really throw um, – they both have a chance to hit, and um, you know we were fortunate to have two pretty uh, solid catchers for the team Missouri um, this year. And then we had a third catcher too, uh, Ryan Stevens, who's kind of a, a jack of all trade, uh, util super utility guy. Uh, and that's that's another thing I'd like to talk about. Go off on a tangent uh, for a second. Yeah. Um, you know. I, I love Ryan Stevens as a baseball player, um, and he was not – I'd be the first to say he's not the most talented guy on the Future Games team. But he is a team guy. He can play multiple positions. Uh, and I always like to tell guys, well, you need to be a baseball player because you could be the second-best shortstop in the country. If Coach Perkins has the second-best shortstop in the country – and the best one moves into the, uh, his district, uh, he's going to play the best one, I'm pretty sure. So that second best so shortstop true. in the entire country needs to be able to play another position, otherwise he's in big trouble. And you get it gets magnified like as you go into Division One or college baseball. It's incredible how many kids played shortstop or center field or batted third or whatever. And you need to be able to play another position. And then you get to a guy like, we'll just pick out the Cardinals, for example, Tommy Edmond. Um, that, that guy was an unbelievable player, obviously, in high school and college. He was a starting shortstop at Stanford University. He's played a handful of games, I think, at shortstop in the big leagues. But he, he goes and plays right field. He plays second base. He plays all over the place. He plays wherever he's told. So he gets on the field, and now that guy's carving out a nice living doing so so being able to play you know you, you got to be receptive you got to be able to play be able to play the outfield go shag bp uh, balls in the outfield during bp take ground balls be willing to go behind the plate it, it the more positions you can play the more chance you have to find a niche on a team and a guy like ryan stevens is going to end up being a heck of a college player just because he has so much versatility and, and those guys is uh, typically your coach's dreams. Am I right, Coach Perkins, on that? Yeah, it's amazing how many – if I go through my list of guys going went on to play college, I would say close to 75% plays a different position than what they did for me in high school. You know, and that's and like what Coach said, you find a way to get on the field, that's the attitude you got to have. If you're pouting because you think you're a shortstop and the shortstop's better than you, you might as well just give up. You, but you should might be, but might, you should be focused on maybe going to second, going to third, or even in the outfield. You know, find a place to get on the field. You know, Nate Orff was a kid who got to the major leagues for us. He was he caught for me. You know, but he was a second baseman in, in the you know the big leagues because he's able to play so many different positions. And no, and coaches absolutely love those guys. Let's 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 I, I love what you just did there because I think it's awesome. I remember Craig Biggio came up as a catcher, right? Mm -hmm. For the Houston Astros. He's a Hall of Fame second baseman, right? Yep. Um, let's look at just in today's 
baseball game just at the trade deadline. Trey Turner goes to the Dodgers. Trey Turner is an all-star shortstop. The Dodgers have yeah. Corey Seager. What does Trey Turner do? He goes to second base. And he is the catalyst, and the Dodgers have won like, uh, I don't know, they've lost two games since he's been there. Um, <laughs> Fernando Tatis yeah. Jr. is an amazing, I love, I will watch Fernando Tatis Jr. He's worth the price of admission. Shortstop, Absolutely. he's getting hurt. He's hitting bombs. He's playing center field last night against the Dodgers. <laughs> because they're concerned about his injury rate at shortstop. Kevin, or I think, I forget his first name, but Frazier uh, came over from the Pirates. He was playing third base. Manny Machado's at third base. He's playing second base. I, I think it's a perfect understanding of what you guys are talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, it's important. This is the major leagues. These are. This is what's happening at the major league it, level. It happens in high school all the time. Man, I had a kid let, just last year, Ty Sissel, who's a pretty talented dude, but uh, he's been. Oh, he's gonna short, be a good one, coach. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's, he's a shortstop, but he, you know, I got Jake McCutcheon, who's committed to Missouri State shortstop. So, put Ty in the outfield, and he'd go get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was. But he playing. bought in. Nobody complained. <laughs> he was playing left field for you, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw him. He was as playing a, left as field as a true freshman. Yes. Yes. As a true freshman, right? Right. Yeah. Yep. And, got, and would you imagine that in a couple of years he'd have a good chance if he works hard and keeps developing to be your starting shortstop potentially down the road? Yeah, just like his dad. His dad was my shortstop, and he played yeah. uh, he played the uh, outfield for Merrimack, and then slew. Then he got drafted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man! See, that's and and so. so that, that experience in the outfield is going to serve him well moving forward because, you know, one day he's going to be a stud for Coach Perkins on his varsity team, and then he'll go off to college. I, I would anticipate that he'll have a good chance to play college baseball, and he won't be the stud again at, to start out, and then he'll develop, and, you know, maybe down the road he gets an opportunity to play pro ball. Who, way too early to tell, but this experience playing the outfield uh, – because Coach Perkins has one of the best shortstops in the state right now, is going to serve Titus well moving forward. I would say but that's what, that's so great as a coach, though, because if I have a need, that's where he's going. I mean, even when in 2016 with one of the twins, Justin Perkins, he was he's a corner guy by trade. I would say third first baseman. We had trouble at second base because our pitching staff was threw so hard. We were getting a lot of reps, a lot of ground balls at second base. I said told the coaches, I'm going to make a change here, put Justin at second base. Okay, he's 220. He's, you know, <laughs> he, he can run a little bit. But he's not your prototypical second baseman, right? But once I, we did that, you know, it, it, we went our way and we're state champs. But, you know, he embraced that too. I mean, just, hey, I need, I need you to move over there. He goes, I'll get it done. And that's, that's, that's the other thing too. You got to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. It's that transition from third to second. That's a difficult. That's not an easy transition. No, is it? Got too much time to think. <laughs> you got these kids at third base that don't need that time to think. <laughs> You're only hurting the ball baseman. club, right? <laughs> it's not going to throw it over there, kid. <laughs> oh man. Guys, when you're when you're discussing these things, let's let's move into the infield. So you had uh, a lot of kids there. I'm sure you had those situations with the infield. What are you seeing with some of the players that you're bringing to the futures games? Are are those kids that can? Do you have those ball players that are are able to transition back and forth? I think so. I, and those kids do a pretty good job. And Coach Moeller did a good job of moving guys around. But even when I go to like a lot of All Star games, I'll say you guys. Work it out on your own. Even my summer team, you know, if I got two shortstops or I got four infielders, you know, I said, you guys rotate through. And we do that on purpose just to get them experienced at a lot of different positions. But I think that goes on at our, our games too, don't you, Kevin? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, at the, uh, an event like the Future Games, that can be, uh, you know, when you're when you're the, the big fish at your high school and you – you know, you think, oh yeah, I'm 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 the best shortstop around, and you know, an event like the sh Future Games, I think that can be an eye-opening experience. We 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 tend to bring guys that 
play the left side of the infield, and then it kind of sorts out down there. We, hey, we move guys around, and they do it on their own, and Coach Perkins moves them around and whatnot. But uh, you, you do see, I, I think, some guys get their eyes opened up and like, oh, I probably am a third baseman, or, man, I'm probably a first baseman um, because, boy, that kid at the school across the state is unbelievable. Um, so you do get to see some of that, and I think that's another great thing about the future games is you're bringing the best of the best together, and so these kids, you know, they're working hard, and they, oh, you know, they sometimes they might, I don't want to say get complacent, but they, they judge themselves versus the kids at their school or whatnot, but in reality, they should be judging themselves versus the kids that are the elite of the elite, and and this, that can be a motiva- motivating factor, um, you know, hopefully light a fire under some of these guys. Is when you're playing with the best, you get to see, all right, here's the level I really need to be at, and there's this other kid that's really good, so i got to keep working. The hard- hardest part about that, when you start moving guys around, I, I, they're all great players, and they all can field ground balls, and they all can set their feet and make a great throw. But it's the next things. It's like – Double cuts, you know, where do I back up? Uh, you know, I'm a shortstop. I've never done a second base pivot too much. Okay, what's my footwork here? And it, that, that takes a little bit to get through. And in those all-star and showcase kind of things, I mean, we have to take it for granted. The kids know what a double cut is, and they may not. Especially, they may know it from a shortstop standpoint, but they don't know from a second baseman. They, third baseman may not know he's, he's – he may not play third base. He may not know he's the cutoff from left field to home. You know, first baseman, you know, I've been mean, played first base too much. Okay, you got left center to right field. I mean, that you're the cut for home. And you'll see people not be where they should be in these situations. And it's not their fault, but it's just, you know, that just comes through the maturation process of playing a lot of different positions. Guys, when we're talking, uh, I, the next point with this, and I think it's a natural flow of it, you know, we, we talk a lot on this show about uh, – double a a double a triple a major players and that's a it's a convenient way and i think it's the only way you can really create competitive balance in those younger ages ages at these tournaments and you know and we we talk a lot about that and people being honest with themselves but once you get up here and i've said this and i believe this very much when you start talking about 12 13 14 even going this these kids start talking about recruiting. What school are you going to? What's your ability? Are you being recruited on a state level, on a regional level, or on a national level? Am I right? Yeah. 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 I mean, we don't really break it down like that, I don't think. What you're saying. I understand what you're yeah. saying. I mean, so you don't really put it like that, but it, it's still kind of there, isn't it? If if Mizzou's in on you, there's going to be other SEC schools in on you. I mean, that's just where that's at. I mean, Missouri State's on you. There's going to be other big D1s on you, not just state schools. So if you're looking – so if I'm, if we're talking a national level, if we put these things into perspective, we're talking probably Power 5 conferences, yes? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What, one thing why I like to tell kids – so they, they have their schools that they want to go to. Mm-hmm. Um, a great exercise for these kids and parents, pull up a school's roster. You know, you, you might think you want to go to Cal State Fullerton. Great. You're a Missouri kid. You go to Francis Hell. Great. A great program. You might be yeah. getting calls from Mizzou or Missouri State. Tell me how many guys Cal State Fullerton has from outside the state of California. No, Maybe no. one. He's probably from Arizona, or he's probably a top five rounder. Um, you know that type of thing. So uh, now pull up Simo's roster or Missouri State's roster. Tell me how many Missouri kids they have. Okay, that I see a lot of similarities here. Um, you know, so and it, it, there's there's a lot of variables here. So. Um, I've coached at private and public schools. So maybe if you're a high academic guy, you're probably going to have to expand your horizons uh, on where you might go. Obviously, we have some great schools in the Midwest, uh, St. Louis University, 
a Creighton, a Xavier, um, you know, but you're, you're kind of focusing more on, uh, you know, that type of thing. Uh, so it's important to know what you're looking for and more importantly, maybe what the other school, what the school you're interested in is looking in, looking yeah, that, for. That, that, that's so true. I mean, like in the summertime, we will see the same coaches most of the time. It's like, you know, we can get that kid. I mean, like if you would, each school, I, I would comfortably say draw a circle five hours around there and it, whatever school, you know, jumps in there, you know, they're, those are the coaches that are going to be looking because they think they have a realistic, you know, shot at getting them. Mm -hmm. the, the kids that go – Big, big time, okay, that's a different story. I mean, now you're looking at LSU or, or Arizona or whatever it is. I mean, that's – take that one off the table. I mean, you know, because, you know, SEMO, SIUE, Murray State, they're not going to even think about that kid because they know he's going to be a D1 kid. When Nick was playing, yep. Keith Gutton from Missouri State told me, he says, we will never get that kid. I said, why? And I was like, you know, I would love for my kid to go to Missouri State. You know, he goes, right. because one of these SEC schools is going to come, big physical catcher, and one of these SEC schools are going to come in and swoop him up. And he was right. Old Miss came and got him. You know, but it, it's a different scene. I mean, like, I, that circle thing, I was, you know, and it's, it's, a, it's a family decision, you know, like, because mom and dad always want to come see you play. You know, and if you 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 got to get on a plane, that unless you're really affluent, that's not going to happen. Right. But, you, you know, you inside – Five five hours is probably the max. You know, after that, you know, it's you're you're a big time guy. You agree with that one? Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And even you know, even the big time guys, like uh, an example, Adam Hatchman just committed um, two days ago to University of Arkansas. Uh, he had offers from LSU, Florida, Mississippi State, Tennessee. Um, Oregon was all over, like you named the school, he could have gone there and, you know, he ends up going to Arkansas, which is up oh, Mizzou, certainly all, and it's in the Midwest though, or mid South, whatever you want to call Arkansas. Uh, so that's a five hour drive. So that makes sense. Um, yeah. you know, mom and dad can go travel down to see him play. Like you really got to think long and hard about what you know, what makes sense for you and your family. Um, it, it, there are outliers though. Like uh, we had a couple of kids on the future games teams that are really gifted academic students um, that are gonna go do, do one of those elite academic schools. So we had Ivy League schools. Uh, we had Duke University, Stanford came to see us. Um, you know, and so if, if you're that type of guy, then, you know, there's, there's only so many schools out there that can fit your needs for that type of thing. So everyone's going to have a little bit different needs. Yeah, I've had them hire academic schools like coaches talking about come up to me and they won't. The first question would be, OK, OK, who can I get? Right. Because if it, it's a GPA, you know, he might, he might love the shortstop, but if he's a two point five student. They're he not, knows that's just yeah, not they're, even they're, possible. They're not going to go for that guy. But now I look at the, like a Mark Schellenberger who, who's at uh, Evansville. You know, he was a four over like a four four student. I was like, okay, now that guy, he qual he qualifies. He fits he fits the mold, and then he's a good player. That's what those are the guys are after. So they, they narrow down their list that way too. JUCOs they they know who those guys are too. And they have yeah. to they have to look at that because they understand their academic standards, mm -hmm. don't they? Yeah. They ha if you don't as a as a college coach, and you're just going out looking, oh, I'm going to try, and then he can't qualify. Then what's what's the sense? You've just wasted all that time on a player that you you you're never going to get into your school. Yeah, it's the Ivy Ivy League schools all the way down to JUCOs. They come up and they ask, okay. Who's who's who, who's my guy? <laughs> you know, and yeah. You can you can help him and point him in the right direction. Okay, that's a guy you need to watch right there. He's a JUCO guy. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna finish up this conversation with this last time. You know, as we're finishing all this and we're talking about these players and the future games and PBR and 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 recruiting and all these things. You know, and especially what you gentlemen uh, spoke about there at the end. How do parents, where are parents getting these resources? Where are they getting this information? How do they understand this process? 
where 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 do they go to understand how to move through this? That's a tough find. Your your coaches should be a resource. I mean, I, I talk to all my kids about it. I know that it, it is it is tough. Um, that's why you go to the, the camps in the summer times. Mm-hmm. You know, like we we talk a lot about recruiting. Um, my door is always open to parents to, you know, if you want to have a chat. I tell my kids, get, get it down to five, you know, schools that, that realistically that you could go to, you know. And, and if, if it's too high, I will tell them that's too high. You know, if it's D1 and I think he's a D2 or D3 three or a JUCO guy, I will tell him that. I mean, I'll give him an honest opinion. But, you know, give me five different colleges and then I'll run from there I mean I had a couple guys just this last year decided they wanted to go JUCO which I thought that it was a good fit and but they hadn't talked to anybody but so I called like four or five all the local local um, JUCOs and two of those guys are going to Eastern East Central which opened brand new programs for haven't had baseball in like 25 years there you go Kevin your thoughts yeah, no, Coach that on. Hopefully your your high school coach, your summer t- coach, uh, you know, you, you're going to get varying degrees of, of guys, but uh, hopefully you can get some guidance there. Obviously, that's a big part of what I do as well, um, help, you know, steer – not steer, that's the incorrect word. Help guide <laughs> um, players in, in the recruiting process, um, you know, educate them on uh, – you know, the ins and outs and the differences of each level. And, you know, one thing I'd like to point out is the difference between a Division One and D2 JUCO player is so minuscule, most people can't tell. Um, now, the coaches can, but most parents and whatnot, they're going to go watch a kid that's signed at a good, solid Division Two program and know that he's a really good player. And it's the truth. He's a really good player. Um, it, it versus the kid going to Mizzou, like it is so close, it, it, it is tough to tell. That that's what I would say is, you know. So it doesn't mean you're not a really good player if you're not going to a, a monster program. So these guys are all really high level players. It's just the difference is so small. A lot of it can be uh, based on projectability and upside and uh, you know things like that. I, I like what you said earlier about checking the rosters out. I mean, if, if the starting shortstop's a senior and you're coming in as a shortstop and you think that's going to be your spot, that might be a place to go because you get a one year under under him and learn the process and learn the team and learn the coach and, and get better at it. Now, now you got shot at three years. Now, if you're, they're bringing in three shortstops, which that's a bad example because – College guys will take ten shortstops and make their team, <laughs> you know. What I'm right. <laughs> but if you're bringing in a uh, say a, a, a two two <laughs> two uh, two or three outfielders, you know that are your same age, you got to look at those guys and say, okay, am I better than those guys, or can I be better than these those guys? I mean, that's the challenge, you know. Yeah. The, you're checking it out where I'm going to fit in, you know. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it's, it's a tough find. You got to do your research. I mean, you you got to look it up and you got to figure out what's going on. You got to go to those camps. Every college has some kind of a showcase or something. You got to go and check out the, the the campus and go for walks around it. And, if, and I don't know if it's legal to talk to a coach during that time. That'd be that'd be great if you could. You know, check out the facilities. Maybe talk to some students that you know are considering that school because those are the guys you're going to be with for four years. So you might want to get to know some of those guys. Kevin, and to Coach's point, when you're talking, when when you, there's three dudes that are coming in. If they've been on PBR's radar, they can go and check the measurables at least. Am I am I measuring to that level? First, first and foremost, correct. And if I'm if I'm even with these guys, I know I can get better, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, it's going to give you a good idea who's in the same neighborhood. The, the numbers it doesn't necessarily mean you're automatically a better player right. or whatnot. Right. You know, if you're an outfielder at the Division One level, you're most likely running a seven-one or under, and most likely you're running somewhere in the sixes. So if you see yourself as a seven-eight sixty runner, you probably know you're not a Division One outfielder. That pitchers. would be an example. In like the pitchers, for example, like you know, if you're right-handed, you're going to be every bit of upper eighties. 
uh, most likely if you're going to be a division one type guy. Uh, and even if you're a 90 guy, you still might not be a D1. You could be a D2. It, there's so many factors, uh, projectability, how tall you are, how your arm action works. Can you spin a breaking ball or have a plus change up? Uh, you know, left-handers, it, the mo- it, it kind of shifts. Um, you know, throwing arm across the infield at shortstop, uh, like a true division one shortstop coach has one um, who can, you know, so it, it's, th- there's things like that that kind of tell you the separators, I would say. There you go, folks. Take it from these guys. They know what they're talking about. Um, if you're in a club and you're doing these things, you know, pay attention to what's being said and think about that. Let the kids have some fun first. Let's, Absolutely. let's, let's do that. For sure. Let's, you know, if you go into tournaments and whatnot, let them have fun, let them enjoy, let's play ball. You get into some of these places, this is some good advice, some opportunities. Uh, Kevin, you got the the deal coming up. Justin, throw that up there. Uh, you can go to the website, prepbaseballreport.com. Uh, it's in Columbia, correct? Yeah, we got our, our, our major event of the fall is the um, fall uh, upper class and under class games. We run them on the same day. Um, it's a good event at Atkins Field, which is the home of Columbia College, uh, a really good NAI program. So it's right in the middle of the state. We'll have a lot of our top players there. We've gotten a great response already, uh, but we do have a little bit of room left. Um, but yeah, that, that will be a very uh, a, a great event this fall for us. Very good, very good. Coach, you're, you got time off now, right? Yeah, after the golf tournament. <laughs> I, 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 I might have to go to Columbia. There you go. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hang out and watch some baseball, right? Yeah. That's right. Hey, we'll definitely have these two back on the show. Guys, always a pleasure talking to you about baseball. Really uh, enjoyed a lot. Um, folks, we hope you enjoyed watching the show. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe. Leave us a comment, share it out, whatever you need to do. Hit that dinger so you get more notifications about upcoming episodes because that's what we do around here. We hit dingers because chicks did the long ball. That's the way it is. That's the way it is. And so thanks for thanks again, everybody. Have a great day in the Lord. And all you pitchers, keep throwing strikes. And you hitters, hit them where they ain't. We'll see you next time.